Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, this is your host Ram uh, with the Cricket Happening Show. Uh, unfortunately there were some problems with YouTube so I had to, it, it took a long time, sorry about that. But well I am out here to, uh, as far as this day is concerned, I am out to talk about the South Africa versus New Zealand second one day international which is right now played at Kimberley where in fact New Zealand as you know, in the pre I mean uh, South Africans are the ones who are under pressure because um, uh, South Africa lost the uh, previous match uh, as you know by one wicket but today uh, once again New Zealand have shown uh, uh, they, are, they have they put up a very very strong score on the board of 279 for 8. Uh, currently the situation is that after New Zealand scored 279 for 8, uh, South Africa currently are 20 for no loss after the 6th over with Quinton de Kock who has been promoted to open the batting. Uh, he is not out on 14 uh, with 1-6 to his name and Graham Smith is batting on 5. 21 for no loss after 6 overs. McLennan has 3 overs, none for 15, and Kyle Mills 3 overs, none for 6. So that's as far as the update is concerned. Now, I, I'll be talking about the New Zealand innings. In fact, South Africans were the ones who actually won the toss here in Kimberley. Now, Kimberley has a record where any team which has chased, uh, probably 11 one-day internationals have been played in Kimberley. And out of the 11 one-day internationals, there are only two one-day internationals where the chasing side has actually lost. But th these are all the Minos team, uh, like uh, Kenya, and I think it was uh, Zimbabwe if I'm not wrong. There are two teams uh, which has lost. Other than that, whichever team which has chased has won, uh, it, it has been a very, very good batting pitch and that's the precise reason that New Zealand could put up uh, 279 for 8 on the board. Just talking about the New Zealand innings, uh, the feature was uh, Kane Williamson uh, getting on to an unbeaten 145 of 136 balls, 17 fours and 1-6 becoming uh, the player uh, the first New Zealand player, I mean, be becoming the highest scorer for New Zealand against South Africa in one day internationals uh, with that in highest individual score of 145. Grant Elliott was the one who actually gave him company uh, by scoring a workman like 48 of 63 balls with five fours. And that was what uh, really, really enabled uh, this uh, New Zealand on innings to really blossom uh, and uh, finish at 279 for eight. And it was a strong finish too uh, with um, Kyle Mills. Uh, and uh, Kane Williamson cracking sixes of the Monty Markle over it went more for 18 or more than 18 runs. If you see Monty Markle's figures, 10 overs, one maiden, 71 runs and three because he was definitely, definitely taken to the cleaners today. Now, as far as uh, this match was concerned, there were two persons who were actually making the debut. As far as uh, New Zealand was going, Colin Munro made his debut but failed with the bat, uh, making only nine runs. And uh, Farhan Baharin, uh, who would be uh, probably coming into bat uh, at the uh, as the South African innings progresses. Uh, he's also making his debut. Uh, as I said, this is a very, very easy pitch to bat on and that's the precise reason uh, New Zealand have put on 279. But as far as the innings uh, goes, it all started with uh, Rory Cleanwell and Olmoda Sotso by bowling very, very tightly. In fact, giving nothing away and uh, really making the New Zealand openers really work. But uh, one of the things which has been bothering New Zealand all the time and it would be bothering Martin Guptill in particular because he was, uh, he was dismissed cheaply he, he occupied 10 balls and scored a duck and he was he fended the ball to point of the balling of Rory Klim to got the ball to lift and at point Fab Duplis is actually taking the catch, the captain uh, of the South African team, the absence of uh, suspended ABD Villiers for two matches. Well, Martin Guptill has been a question mark. It's very essential for New Zealand that Martin Guptill scores and that has been something uh, which has always been eluding Martin Guptill now. Martin Guptill has been really, really struggling in this series against South Africa and that is very important for New Zealand that Martin Guptill gets his pieces together. But he was gone for a duck. BJ Watling today was promoted in the batting order. In fact, he was, opened, he was uh, told to open the batting and uh, he, he, he hit two boundaries but after reaching 12, he shuffled uh, uh, towards the off stamp and Monty Morkel trapped him LBW. So that was the time when the score was uh, 32 for 2. But after that, an 127 run partnership. Kane Williamson was looking in good touch. He was playing his strokes with uh, a deft touch and timing. And uh, he was also, there were a lot of uh, strokes that you would see. He was moving around the offside, shuffling around to the offside and then, uh, you know, nudging the ball down the leg side. So probably he had a ploy there. Probably he, he thought that this pitch is pretty easy to bat on. That's absolutely grassless. So he probably thought that this is the right time for him to really, really, uh, you know, uh, t take his chances and he was doing well. And uh, well, as I said, the pitch was very easy to bat on and Kane Williamson definitely made batting look easy. Uh, he really drove the over pitch balls uh, very, very fluently to the boundary. 
uh, and he played some very good pull shots too. And uh, th that was the reason New Zealand scored 279 for 8, 145 to his name, an unbeaten one of 136 balls with 17 fours and 1 six. I'm sure Kane Williams, this was his highest, uh, will, uh, highest score for Kane Williamson in one day internationals. But Grant Elliott was um, a very, very superb partner for uh, Kane Williamson as he gave him tremendous support in that stand of 127, uh, which took the score uh, to uh, probably 159. But uh, that was the real uh, shining feature for New Zealand. Other than that, uh, after that, Brendan McClellan came in, contributed a quick 17 runs of just 10 balls, two fours and one sixes, clean bowl by uh, Monet Morkel. Uh, Colin Munro on his debut failed out for nine of 13 balls with one four. Uh, Franklin was uh, bowled by uh, Sotsobe for a duck. Jimmy Neesham was run out for five. Nathan McCallum contributed 19 of 23 balls. Uh, Kyle Mills then gave uh, a good uh, impetus to the innings uh, by striking a six on the boundary in an unbeaten 15 of seven balls. And the New Zealand innings closed at 279 for eight of 50 overs. Looking at the bowling figures, Rory Cleanwilt and Lundwabu Sotsobe, uh, they bowled excellently, I thought, and uh, in fact, uh, in the first uh, the first uh, power play overs, they did excellently. Rory Cleanville, 10 overs, 2 minutes, 2 for 45. Don Wobo Satsobe, 10 overs, 2 minutes, 2 for 30, pretty economical. Moni Markel was the costliest, 3 for 71. Ryan McLaren was the one uh, who Kane Williamson and Grant Elliott targeted, 8 overs, 1 for 57. 9 overs for 45 for Robin Peterson, uh, who gave uh, the clip of 5 runs per over. And Faf who pleased the captain bowling 3 overs for 19 runs. So right now, uh, we'll go to the latest situation in South Africa. Uh, South Africa are doing pretty well right now. They are 21 for no loss of 7 overs. As I said, it's a pretty, pretty good batting pitch. Uh, I, 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 don't, I mean, the only thing is that, that um, South Africa know the history of this particular Kimberley ground at the DBS Diamond Oval, uh, where 11 matches have been played and uh, two matches uh, are the only ones where the team chasing huge scores has lost, and that has been the Minos like Kenya and I don't remember the other team. Uh, Kenya was one of the teams. But South Africa currently, they have moved on to 27. Quinton de Kock has uh, uh, scored a six here. So that is uh, very interesting. He has just uh, hit a six uh, of the balling of Nathan McCallum. In fact, he has welcomed Nathan McCallum uh, with a six over the, over the line. So that's a good shot. So in fact, uh, Quinton de Kock is looking very good. 20 of 23 balls. As I said, this is a batting pitch. Uh, there's absolutely nothing in for the bowlers. Uh, it's going to be hard grind. Uh, unless and until, but one thing is that the South Africa have, uh, uh, and right now, um, I in fact, um, uh, he has scored a boundary too, so Quinton Ducock is doing well, he's unbeaten 24 right now, Graham Smith is not out on 5, 31 for no loss, we are in the 8th over, I'll come to that, uh, other than that, uh, some news uh, which I would like to talk about uh, is, um, we have some um, uh, matches coming up today, today we have India and uh, England uh, actually clashing in the 420 international, for India, well, if they win, they are taking the series, and England, I am sure, they would like to stop India uh, in their tracks. Uh, but uh, what is going to be interesting to see is what is going to be England's ploy, because uh, England um, uh, have found it a bit uh, uh, tough uh, uh, playing against India, uh, trying to really put it across them. So whether uh, what is going to be England's ploy today uh, to take on the Indians, and uh, they know uh, that um, India, uh, they, they have uh, some bowlers who can bowl some good line and like Bunesh, Kumar, Shami, Ahmed, Ishan Sharma has been chipping in well, uh, but the spinners have been doing the job, Ravinder Jadeja in particular, uh, filling the all round role to perfection. Uh, what, I mean, one has to wait and watch uh, what are England's plans today, but as I said, England are the ones who are under pressure today, uh, and uh, they would definitely, definitely like it to take it to the fifth one day international, uh, probably level the series today and take it to the fifth one day international. So that is coming up. And other than that, we also have Australia and Sri Lanka uh, going to play the fifth and final one-day international, and as you know, Mahela Javadane is playing his last test match uh, as the captain of the Sri Lankan team. So that's going to be interesting, and I'm sure the Sri Lankan boys uh, would like to uh, give it to Mahela Javadane as a gift before he goes, so that you know Sri Lanka also would have the first ever one-day international series win uh, in Australia. If they could make it, that would be a great gift for Mahela Javadane. And uh, they were pretty unlucky the other day when it was called a no result. So, uh, so, so, so Sri Lanka definitely on the ascendant, no doubt. For, uh, for Australia, well, they would be definitely liking to uh, stop Sri Lanka by do, uh, in, in doing so by actually uh, trying to win this match so that they can at least level the series. So that's a good battle uh, on the cards here as far as um, uh, Sri Lanka and Australia is concerned, which is going to be played at the Bellary Oval. Well, other than that, uh, 
Uh, dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, unfortunately today uh, I am a bit short of time. I am really, really running short of time. But uh, in the meanwhile, I'll just give you the latest update here uh, from the Kimberley Oval where uh, Quinton de Kock is not out on 25. Graham Smith is not out on 11. And 38 for no loss, 8 overs, as I said. Uh, it's, uh, um, I mean, one could say, even though South Africans are under pressure after losing the first match and uh, New Zealand putting a strong score, uh, one could really, really fancy South Africa here because the reason it's a very, very easy pitch to bat on. And I'm sure South Africa are not going to let go this opportunity uh, to win against um, New Zealand and actually level the series with the third and deciding one-day international still to come up. So we are just waiting here. The bowling figures, well, Kyle Mills is currently in operation. He has been bowling economically, 4.1 overs, one maiden, none for six. McLennan has three overs, none for 15. Nathan McCallum, one over. He bowled to Quinton de Kock. He, he really, really carted him for 17 runs in that particular over. But we are having a good game on hand. Well, uh, other than that, dear fans, friends, and scrabbers, as I said, I'm running short of time today. Uh, on this note, uh, I'm ending my cricket show today. Uh, see you all tomorrow. As I said, I wouldn't be able to go the whole hog. But uh, tomorrow, definitely, as you, as you know, uh, my cricket happening show is a daily cricket show. So I'll definitely come and uh, share uh, like what uh, went on uh, the previous day. Uh, thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host, Ram, signing off for the day. Thank you.